Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It is finally spring here. The snow is completely gone. I haven't seen any in days. The grass is starting to turn green and there is signs of leaves on the trees. So uh, it's very exciting. And it also means that it's time to break out some warmer weather knits. Today I'm wearing my cozy classic tee. Um, why don't I just show it to you? Ta-da! This is a pattern by Jessie Made Designs, and I knit it in some cotton fingering weight. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I picked it up at Fiber Nook. I think it was a sheepies cotton, um, I can't remember. Uh, but you too could knit this in a fingering weight. I have been really interested in fingering weight warmer weather yarns lately and it's something I've been looking into a lot. There's one um, that I used in a pattern that I'm going to show you uh, coming right up. Um, but it, are there some, do you have some favorite warmer weather yarns? This is something I've been looking into lately um, because with the green <laughs> showing up I'm finally able to uh, really sort of wear my warmer weather knits and I'm, I'm interested in trying different yarns. I've, I've dabbled in a couple, but I, I don't really have some go-to. So I have one yarn that I've used several times. You're gonna see in today's episode. It is um, Kelborn Woolen's Mojave, which is a great cotton linen blend and I love it because it's really easy to wash and dry. Uh, and I've used some Equinox Sport, which is a silk blend, silk and linen. Um, so I'm really interested in trying out some different warmer weather yarns. One of them, uh, one that I'm interested in is, is another cotton fingering. Uh, I'm also interested in using um, some just plain silk. Um, let me know if you've been using some different yarns or fibers for your warmer weather knits. Um, living where I live, <laughs> uh, wool, is a staple. So um, I'm still getting used to the idea of knitting for myself for warmer weather. So if you have some favorite fibers that you like to use, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I have some finished objects. I actually have a whole bunch of little finished objects this week, which is sort of exciting. And they, they cover a, a variety of different crafts. So I think I should probably get into it. Um, the last, when last we spoke, uh, dear viewer, I was working on a June tank top. This was uh, part of the Beave Along, and I was using a little bit bougie beaver in that Equinox yarn I was just speaking about, the silk and linen base, and it's done. It was, to be fair, it was almost done the last time, but it's much prettier now. I'll show you a finished picture. Um, ta -da! This is just a great little tank top that I, that I whipped up. Um, it's a great pattern. I was going off script, as I usually do, in using a yarn that was a very different weight than the one that was recommended. The pattern that I had was the June Top, which is for DK weight. There is also a um, June Light, which uses uh, fingering weight. So if depending on what gauge of yarn you're using, you can pick one or the other. I had purchased the DK weight um, pattern, and so I just simply knit a different size and worked with the gauge that I had and I've talked about this before. Um, basically what I did was figure out my gauge, which took a little finagling this time. Um, my gauge ended up being somewhere around six stitches per inch, which is 24 stitches in four inches. The pattern called for 20 stitches in four inches. So what I did was figure out the number of stitches I would need for the finished object or the finished bust circumference that I wanted, which was about I was going for a little bit of uh, positive ease. So I went for about a 42. So I just figured out how many stitches I would need for that size. Um, I went to the pattern, I chose the closest one and I used those instructions. This tank top is a little bit higher in the front than in the back. It dips a little bit lower in the back and that's how I will know which is the front and which is the back. Uh, and it's, it's finished. I haven't had a chance to wear it because it's been warm, but it hasn't been that warm, although we have some really nice weather coming up in the next couple weeks. So I am looking forward to getting that uh, aware. And that's my June tank top. For care, um, 
I will probably just be washing this by hand, which isn't a big deal. I don't find that to be so onerous. I just fill up a sink with some water and some soak or eucalyptus or whatever I have on hand. Um, I pop the item in until I remember uh, to take it out, which can be 15 minutes or it can be several hours depending on my day. And then I just, uh, I squeeze out the water. I don't wring it, but I do squeeze out the water. I roll it up in a towel. I step on it to get out whatever excess water there is. Then I lay it flat to dry until I remember that I've done that. And then I pick it up and we'll wear it again. So that's my June top. And that was for the beeve along. And because I had, um, probably a half a skein left, I took my leftovers and I made a silk and linen Sophie scarf. Oh, who doesn't love a Sophie scarf? Um, this again is a very simple pattern. I find that I like to add, um, so if you've never knit a Sophie scarf, you start out with a very few stitches and then you increase gradually to a central point and then you just decrease. So the shape of it is not, um, it's not really complicated, but I do find that I like my Sophie scarf a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. So I just simply do a few more increases and then I decrease back to the number that um, the pattern calls for. I like to have a little bit of extra um, tie um, because I don't know, I don't like to feel like I'm being choked. And also I just like to have a little bit of dangly bits. And there it is. Oh. So cute. So a silk and linen version of the Sophie scarf. This is in that same silk and linen blend that I used, a little bit bougie. And I think this would be nice for like rainy days, cool windy days in the summer, spring. What do we think? I love the Sophie scarf. It's, it's totally a go-to pattern for me now. Um, so there we have it. I knit this on, it's a sport weight yarn. I used some four millimeter needles um, and I followed the pattern like I said doing a few more increases because I do like uh, to have enough room to play to tie it without feeling choked and that's it so the other thing that I had going on um, the last time I showed you was a bit of a swatch that swatch was for a uh, class that I took through Vogue Knitting Live um, and it was a really fun class. Uh, there weren't too many people in it. And we were doing some simple cross stitch on knitted fabric. Uh, and it was really interesting because the instructor uh, oh, oh, had a really interesting story to tell. She's from Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. <laughs> she moved to the United States, is living in Texas, has a history or sort of a background in theater costume design, and then started doing... Um, like fashion design more recently. She's uh, come up with some different pieces, sh shawls, I think, and shrugs that incorporate this technique. But this is my little swatch for doing a uh, cross stitch on a knitted fabric. The knitted fabric, ooh, let's see if I can get that to focus, yay. Um, the knitted fabric is, uh, it's got a bit of a texture to it. It's sort of a woven, um, garter stitch and stockinette stitch with holes in it for the cross stitch to occur. Um, cross stitch fabric is very symmetrical. It's very squared off and knitted fabric is not quite square. Knit stitches tend to be slightly more wide than they are tall. And so it's not ideal as a background for uh, cross stitch, which is why uh, this sort of special woven textured fabric is, is uh, slightly more appropriate to cross stitch. I used, I just followed the simple, um, I guess, uh, swatch instructions that she had. And I used some um, yarn that I had lying around and I didn't want my little swatch to go to waste. So I went to Michael's and I picked up uh, an eight by eight inch um, canvas. They're very inexpensive. And then I went to Canadian Tire. Uh, if you're not from Canada, you may not be familiar with Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire is like, Oh, how does one describe Canadian Tire? It's kind of, it's kind of a hardware store mixed with a home goods store. 
It's the kind of place your dad took you when you were young to get a bicycle when you grew out of your old one or a new sled, but it's also the kind of place where you would go to pick up a new Christmas tree or Christmas decorations. They have a lot of gardening stuff in the summer. You can pick up a blender and a coffee maker, uh, pots and pans, like all sorts of kitchen things. They have housewares, they have home decorating, but they also have a big car department and uh, you can pick up, I don't know, screws and, and nails and paint and it's sort of an all around store. Anyway, I was at Canadian Tire with my husband and I picked up some thumbtacks to affix my swatch to my, uh, okay, which way is up? This way, I think. There we go. Uh, to my canvas. And there we have it. So I think I'm going to be putting this on my wall somewhere in my office. Uh, my daughter has, um, indicated that it can't go on the same place as all of my round embroidery hoops because it's square and they're round, which makes a lot of sense. So I'm just gonna have to find another place for my squared projects, which might be just opposite the circles so that they can look at each other longingly across my office. Anyway, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that the thumbtacks and the, um, the frame just uh, really finish it nicely. And now my little swatch can be hung on the wall so that I can look at it and uh, consider doing it again. Now, the swatch that I had only took up about a half a skein. I used some Estelle Eco Cotton that I picked up in my travels. Uh, and because I had a half a skein left over and because it was Earth Day recently, I decided to uh, make a project that I have been looking at uh, and kind of thinking about and not really tackling. <laughs> and that was making some uh, face rounds for uh, just my own personal use. I am trying in small ways to be more environmentally friendly. And uh, this was one thing that was sort of in the back of my mind, um, but I just haven't had the nerve maybe i don't know because they're they're crocheted and i'm not i still consider myself very much a beginner crocheter but i thought why not uh try it out so i found a very simple pattern there are many many simple patterns and most of them a lot of them are free um for just a simple round of cotton and i made a couple in in this way i've already used them and washed them and then as I was playing with it, and because I'm very much a beginner crocheter, uh, I began to play around with the edging a little bit. Uh, and I made some that are just a little bit beefier with a slightly more substantial edging. Now I know they're not perfect. Um, you can see very much where uh, my round started and where I went up, but do you know what? I feel like these weren't a terrible attempt at crocheting some things in the round. It was, like I said, quite a simple pattern. Um, and if they aren't perfect, that's okay. I'm not, they're for me, so I wasn't terribly offended, but I ended up making eight of them out of the 25 grams of cotton that I had. And I thought that was pretty good. I put them in a little laundry bag and I wash them whenever I'm, whenever I remember to, or if I'm running out of them. Uh, and it could be that this is something that I pick up again for gift knitting uh, in the fall, if I think of it, if I'm looking for sort of uh, little things to give, um, to give away. This is going to go on the uh, gift list, I think, because they were very quick to make um, and quite enjoyable. And I think very useful, at least for me. So um, I'm going to I'm gonna keep this in the back of my mind. I'm gonna keep using them and see how I like them. Um, I've had a f about a week to use them and I have been enjoying them very much, um, but I might see if my daughters wanna try them out and how they like them. So once I finish doing some cross stitch <laughs> on knitting, um, I got the bug and I wanted to do some more cross stitch. So I found a pattern that I had lying around and I just whipped it up. Um, this is a June bug and darling pattern. I was a little disappointed in the sense that the um, the fabric that I have, the Ada fabric that I had was very, very stiff and sort of difficult to, to um, get smooth on my hoop. Uh, but I'm quite happy with the finished object. And this was a very quick 
quick um, project. I did um, change the color of the flower. It's supposed to be gold, but I kind of liked this peachy coral color, so I went with that. And that's it. Uh, another uh, shape to go on my walls. Now, I, I haven't asked her what she thinks about ovals and circles. Like, do they get along? Is that okay? It could be that um, the ovals and the circles can hang out together. And if they can't, then I'll have to find another place in my office. But of course, I'll have to be asking her her thoughts on that. Now, I have one more finished object. It has been a very productive <clears throat> and creative last couple weeks. Um, and I don't know why that is. Some of these projects, again, are quite small and didn't require a lot of work. Um, but it was really fun to just dabble in small things and watch them sort of come off my needles or hook or embroidery, tapestry needle, whatever. Anyway, um, I also made a TRK Everyday Cowl. This is uh, an accessory by um, Dreary. Dre Renin Knits or Andrea Mowry, again in her um, long series of fabulous and easy to wear cowls. This is some yarn that I had left over from um, a couple of test knits, no, not test knits, sample knits that I did um, earlier this year. I had made, uh, knit up a couple of hats for um, Jody Brown of the Grocery Girls for her company, her yarn company, um, Frankie Gray Fibers. And I had lots left over. And it turns out I had enough to make a lovely striped TRK everyday cowl. Now this cowl, again, this is how easy this is to wear. You just pop it on and you rob a bank. No, don't rob a bank. Uh, and you just kind of zhuzh it around and then that's it. You don't have to play with it. So uh, I think that this cowl might be for me because let's be honest, that color is pretty great. Uh, but I think I'm going to be making this for um, somebody I know who is interested in wearing knitwear, but is, has a hard time. Um, I'm not sure if it's the confidence or knowing how to wear shawls. Shawls can be, let's be honest, they can be a bit intimidating to wear. I think partly because they're so big and they don't always stay where you want them to stay. And if you're not used to seeing how shawls are worn, they can be a little bit intimidating, but I think a cowl, you just pop it on and then you don't have to touch it. You can just wear it until you decide to take it off eventually. So I think that this is something that might be, might be going to something like this, might be going to a friend of mine to experiment with in terms of wearing knitwear and how she likes it. Uh, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. I had, because I was using some leftovers, I had, um, I was a little bit short. I had two stripes that I couldn't finish because I didn't have quite enough yarn. But I think that I fudged it in the seaming and if I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't know. There it is. I'm really happy with how this turned out. These are so easy to wear and it reminds me very much of the first one that I made, which was the shift cowl that I just love. Um, I think this would make a great gift too. This one is a little bit more knitting than the Sophie scarf, but it also, it covers a bit more and is a bit more warm. So I would totally consider this a very, very approachable pattern for um, gift knitting especially if you have hair that doesn't get messed up when you put things over top and take them off. Anyway, I made the la size large um, because I wanted to make sure that I had enough uh, room and it wouldn't sit too snug around my neck. I think that if you were to make this in a heavier weight of yarn, which you absolutely could do, um, then you could make a smaller size because it would just sit slightly larger. And then uh, if you were to do that, I would also use a larger needle. So if you were to, this is DK yarn. If you were to use a worsted weight yarn, you could absolutely make this pattern. I might make a smaller size and I'm pretty sure, there's birds outside my window. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you, you would get um, a lovely size with larger needles appropriate to the size of yarn. So I used four millimeter needles 
I think if you were to, if I were to knit it in a uh, worsted weight or Aran weight, I would probably use a five millimeter needle just to give it um, enough sort of airiness um, and lightness so that it would sit um, away from my neck but still be light and warm to wear. Great, great stash buster because you could knit this in um, lots of different um, odds and ends of, of yarn that you had. You could stripe it. Um, you could fade it, you could make it in one color, um, lots of options. And that is all the finished objects that I have off my needles today. But I do have a couple things that I'm working on. Because I liked how my June tank top turned out so much, <laughs> I started another one. Um, this time in, again, my very uh, go-to summer knits yarn, and that is um, Kelburn Woolen's Mojave. This is Prussian blue, which I think will look great with denim. Um, and I have just made a very little bit of progress on it. A couple of inches. This, this went on the needles in preparation for a very busy weekend coming up. Um, I've got some volleyball and a soccer game. And so I just wanted something very, very plain and easy to knit. Normally I knit socks. Um, but I thought a lot of stockinette stitch would be nice and easy. And I've got, uh, I've got this much yarn in this ball. There are 50 gram balls. And then I have another one for tomorrow. I don't think I'll knit through more than one and a half balls of yarn. Do you? Should I pack another one? the age old knitters question. I'll just take lots and lots of yarn that I would, couldn't possibly knit in a uh, 12 hour period, but you know what, it's good to be prepared. Um, I'll probably just throw an extra ball in there just to be on the safe side. Um, and then I'll have lots to knit all weekend. So that's my June top the second. And in other new cast on news, uh, I finally started the um, Marseille sweater. This is a sweater designed by Petite Knits, um, who I really like. I'm finding that I have certain designers that I definitely um, tend to liking their designs. One of them is uh, Andrea Maori. I think because a lot of her um, designs are quite classic, but also she has some very fun and colorful ones. So you can play with um, color or a more classic design, um, maybe as evidence as that cowl. Um, the other person I really, really enjoy is Petite Knits. So uh, this is a sweater that has been out for a number of years and I really liked it when it came out. I put it in my queue and I've just been looking for the right time to knit it. For quite some time, I wasn't sure what yarn I would want to use. And then last year in July, um, a fairly local to me yarn store was having a sale. So I checked out her website because I thought, well, it's, it's good to support your local yarn stores. Um, and lo and behold, she had the yarn that was called for in this pattern, which is uh, Sandis Garn, which is a Norwegian yarn, um, double Sunday. Let me get a label. It was a yarn that I had never used before or really seen um, in my yarn store travels. It is Double Sunday. Uh, and this is the petite knit version. So obviously it was the one that I needed to get for this sweater. Um, I got two colors. One is called whipped cream and one is called sailor in the dark. And I am making this lovely striped, um, sweater in the yarn that's called for it never happens for me. It is a striped sweater with a drop sleeve uh, or a drop shoulder. I'm going to be picking up the shoulders from these uh, armholes and working the way down. Uh, for right now, I'm just working on the body. There will be four of these navy stripes and then a chunk of stockinette and then four inches of one by one ribbing, which I'm not really looking forward to. However, uh, this sweater is moving along very quickly. 
uh, since the last time I saw you, I hadn't even cast on. So it's moving very quickly. And so I think maybe four inches of one by one ribbing is doable. And it is hockey playoff time. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the NHL, uh, Edmonton has a team called the Edmonton Oilers. The Edmonton Oilers, when I was very young, uh, were like a powerhouse team. They won the Stanley Cup several times. And when I was very young, like maybe six or seven, um, some of the Edmonton Oilers came to the small town where I lived and they were having a like a autograph event at the Westlock menswear, because uh, I'm from Westlock. Uh, and uh, it, it was just the weirdest thing. I remember going with my dad they signed these little wooden hockey sticks for us. And they were some like very, very famous um, Oilers, including Mark Messier and Wayne Gretzky. And uh, I remember liking Mark Messier because he told me I was very cute. I was like five or six at the time, but I certainly knew how to appreciate a compliment at that time. Anyway, uh, cut to 2023 and the Edmonton Oilers team this year. Uh, They're currently leading their series three to two. It is best of seven. So if they win one more game, then they move on to the next round. So that means a lot of uh, nervous knitting time uh, while we, we watch hockey and um, cheer on our team. So I'm hoping that the impetus of nervous hockey knitting will mean that one by one ribbing will get knit quickly and I can move on to the sleeves. What are you working on right now? Are you uh, are you watching sports? I'm a very fair weather um, hockey fan. I mean, it's fun to go to a game every once in a while, and I've been fortunate enough in the last season to be able to attend a couple. Um, a playoff, playoff anything is when it gets really exciting, especially if your team's doing well. So uh, are you watching some sports right now? Is it playoff time? Um, and does that make you very nervous or are you kind of a more relaxed sports fan? I'd love to know. Um, anyway, that is what I've been working on and I'm happy to let you know that next weekend is the Gathering Threads Festival here in Edmonton. Um, I'm hoping it's still playoff hockey time because it just means the whole city is more excited. But uh, at the Gathering Threads Festival next weekend, May 5th to 7th, I will be attending. Um, I'm going to be taking a class and making granny squares. I will be definitely shopping the marketplace. I'm going to be attending the fashion show on Friday night. And uh, I have been talked into doing a set, <laughs> talked into doing a demonstration of my 3D sock machines. Uh, that is going to be happening Saturday afternoon from 2.30 to 4 o'clock. I will be in the social lounge, I believe, and I'll have my husband with me, who will be answering all of the difficult 3D printing questions, and I will be answering all of the difficult uh, circular soft machine questions. Uh, I'd love to see you come and stop by and say hello. There's going to be a really, really great coffee shop on site. Um, I had their coffee last year. It was really excellent coffee. Um, but also it's a great place to stop and have a snack, uh, rest your feet, pull out your craft, um, have a beer. I'm quite confident there will be beer on hand. I'm really hoping so because I think after an hour and a half of nervously um, demonstrating my sock machine, I think I'm going to need one. If you are around at the Gathering Threads Festival and you see me, please come and say hi. Um, let me know who you are and what you're working on. And I have a little gift for you. If you come and see me, I have some things to give away uh, to promote my channel and to say thank you for watching. So please, if you are around at the Gathering Threads Festival and you see me, come on over, say hi. You don't have to hug me if you don't want to, but if you're feeling like you need a hug, you can bring it on in. I don't mind. Um, I'm really looking forward to meeting you. And uh, if you're not in the area, please uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you're working on anyway. I'd love to hear from you. I hope in the next couple of weeks, I will see you at the Gathering Threads Festival. And if I don't, I hope you find time to do the things that you like to do, whether that's crochet, cross stitch, knitting, cheering on your favorite team, uh, 
whatever it is, I hope that you find time to do the things that make you feel like you and that make you happy. I know I plan on knitting a lot. See you soon. Bye-bye.